Canada's favorite coffee is always fresh and makes for the perfect coffee break. And pairing it with one of our delicious fresh-baked donuts makes it even better. Enjoy the favorites Canadians can't get enough of. Canada's favorite coffee and donuts. It's time for Tim's. I'm a lot more sexy than Randy, and you know that. Randy, Julian said he loved me. But he was lying. Don't trust him. He was lying, and I'm flying. Hey guys, MegaMat1254 here again. Welcome back to another episode of MGM Review, guys. And guys, we are finally back for these reviews. It has been quite a few months since I've covered another episode of this, but we are back. And today, guys, I'm going to be covering Season 4, Episode 2 of Dan's Reviews World Gone Mad. I got a lot I want to say about this episode, so without further ado, guys, let's get right into the review. Okay, so this episode of World Gone Mad, I guess I'll start off by covering the flashback timeline first, is... Okay, we basically find out in this episode that Lincoln's brother James, which if you guys don't remember, he popped up in 211 of the show way back in season 2, and he also um, made a surprise appearance at the end of 401 where he was revealed to be an apostle. This episode, we fully get into this character, and uh, yeah, he's a sick fuck. Basically, he tricks our characters into letting him into the community. Well, they don't trick them, they just let him in. But then, he fucks around in the community. Basically, we have like this housewarming party, where, uh, yeah, Tom is, uh, well, he's Tom. And fucking, basically after that, friggin' like... We have James who's telling, like, stories to Lincoln and stuff, right? And, like, he basically kind of implies that his family's dead. But, like, he says it in a way where you're supposed to kind of, like, question him. So, it's very 50-50 with that. And, uh, freaking, you have Lincoln in this one, right? And he's actually a standout character this episode. Is he's also, like, freaking, like, going through a lot of shit, right? Because his brother does, like, really bad stuff within Kingstonville, right? And, um, he basically has to kill his brother, and he lies about the group. He lies to the group. He doesn't kill James. He lets him go, right? And basically, James starts taunting him to his face, saying, Yeah, you'll never have your kids back. You were a piece of crap. You killed the Viper, like, city. You killed a city of innocent people. Friggin'. Meanwhile, it's like, this guy has no fucking clue what he's talking about. Like, he wasn't there for the Viper War or any of that shit. So, friggin'. This guy's off his fucking rocker, clearly, right? So, friggin', Lincoln lets him go, and, um, yeah, this guy, well, obviously, he's gonna come back and bite him in the ass for that one, friggin', we have a bunch of other stuff in the flashback timeline as well with, uh, comedy, tons of comedy, friggin', the comedy in this episode is amazing, guys, I love the whole, um, I love the entire friggin', um, like, just the Tom stuff, like, Tom is absolutely hilarious in this episode, and, hey, he's Canadian. He goes to Tim Hortons and gets Timbits and shit, which is fucking cool, because I'm Canadian, too. So, Tom gets brownie points there. <laughs> but, um, yeah, he is legit the highlight of this episode. He's the best fucking character of the whole episode, without a doubt. He's so fucking funny. Even in the current timeline, we have a whole montage with this man getting drunk. Friggin', like, having people at his bar. We have trailer park boys smoking fuck hose song playing by snoop dog it's just ridiculous in the best way possible it's easily the funniest episode of the whole show and i got to appreciate how well the comedy and dark tones are blended together it's a very very good mix of dark serious moments and just full-on bullcrap in like the best way possible oh also Uncle Larry is in this episode from the McJuggernugget Psycho series. He gets a cameo as this drunk guy who pisses himself called Bruce. Pisses all over Tom's floor. And friggin' it's just it's just chaos in this place. And the bar it's called Manland. And uh friggin' it's funny story behind Manland is uh friggin' that was like a joke between myself and uh Dan's reviews, right? And friggin' uh, Rowdy. And friggin' basically it came to life one of these days. It was just like, you know what? The bar is Manland. 
that's what the bar will be. And freaking <laughs> in this episode, we see it come to fruition, and it is golden. I love the Manland freaking bar. It's so freaking funny. I love that location. And yeah, that's kind of where I'm at with the comedy side of things. The comedy's amazing. And freaking and we do get some serious stuff at the bar, too, like when, uh, Julia has to fight those three guys because they're beating up an innocent girl, and I found that was cool that we come full circle with that storyline. It's almost like she's reliving her past and, like, doing what she couldn't all those years ago. And, um, yeah, the bar stuff is all fine and dandy. I love that stuff. Rivers was cool in this one, too. Definitely setting up for a, uh, relationship with her and Tom. And, um... I think that's a good idea, freaking. It's actually cool seeing them two, like, uh, you know, get along like that. It'll be cool seeing Tom have a fucking relationship in the apocalypse. It's gonna be utter chaos, but it's still cool nonetheless. Fucking, um... And then, uh, basically the rest of the episode is, like, um... Basically about this mist, right? And, like, I almost feel like it simplifies something. But I don't know what yet. Maybe it's James's fucking psycho mental state. Like, I think that's a part of it. Friggin' um... Basically, bodies start turning up in Kingstonville, right? Due to this James asshole, which is Lincoln's brother, like I said earlier. And, uh, friggin' he kills somebody, and this is the past timeline again when he does this, right? Friggin' <clears throat> he kills somebody, and friggin' in the current timeline, somebody is dead again, right? And, like, but this time it's not James. It's, uh, somebody else inside the walls that's doing this now. So we gotta find out who the fuck the rat is. Me personally, I think it's this Robbie guy from Cobra Kai. That Zack character. That's who I think is doing this. I think that kid's a little fucker. And I think that he is absolutely playing our characters for fools. Either that or it's Bruce. The freaking drunk pisser. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, fucking... What was I gonna say? Um... Yeah, all that stuff is really good, but I do have a few flaws with this episode, guys, that I want to get into. I only got two, and I guess I'll go into my first one, is I don't like the train scene at all. I think the train scene is really random and out of place. I I just don't like how bringing in a new group in the middle of an arc that, uh, like, I guess this is more what I mean, is I don't like a new group coming in right as we're trying to get into a different group because as soon as i see these advanced like military soldiers i'm just like uh and they like take kizia i was just really confused by that and i was like ah kizia is just leaving the story for now i guess like i don't know i didn't like that very much to be honest um another thing i didn't like is that dave is on the council I think it's weird that they would put this guy on the council, because he still is this, uh, he still did, like, this evil shit, right? And it's like, um, I don't know. I just think, like, Dave being cool with our characters, I'm fine with that. I can get over that, but putting him in a leadership position is kind of weird. I just thought it was kind of weird that, like, Dave is, like, on the council. That might just be a me thing, though. But yeah, other than that, those are really my only two, like, flaws with the episode. Like, those are my two actual, like, noticeable flaws. The rest is just, like... I either really loved it, I liked it, or I thought it was good, right? And like I said, the uh, comedy in this episode is on point. The dark moments are on point. The rivalry between the brothers is very good, and I cannot wait to see where it goes later on in the season. I know Dan's cooking up some good shit here with that. And uh, yeah, guys, friggin', that's really all I have to say about this review, is I thought this was a very solid episode. I really enjoyed it. I just would have cut the Ziltramite stuff out. I would have cut the train out. Or have the train, but don't have them take Kezia. Just because Kezia is a character, at least for me, that was kind of lacking in uh, Season 3. And I really wanted to see where that character was going to go more in 4. But if she's off the story, then um, I kind of wouldn't really enjoy that. But that's just me, guys. Like I said, those are like that's my only like major noticeable issue with it is that and uh well the dave stuff on the council but yeah everything else in this episode guys is fucking solid and this is a solid effort i really like this episode and uh yeah it's great build up it's great setup and i cannot wait to see where it goes so yeah guys that is going to be it for this review if you guys want to see any more videos uh related to world gone mad feel free to leave suggestions down in the comments i'm open to anything um, and, uh, yeah, guys, that's gonna be it for this video. I'm gonna put my verdict up on the screen real quick, and I'll see you in the next one.